Welcome to part two for this watercolour painting of a golden eagle. And this time we'll be painting that lovely yellow detailed looking eye. So let's get the bushes wet and let's get started. Now then for the eye, let's use some more yellow. So lemon yellow. Start off with that. That might be enough for now. I want to get some burnt sienna, which is that one just down on camera. And pop that in because the eye itself is not just yellow, is it? It looks it, you think, well, that's yellow, Paul. But when you look really closely at the colours, it's not a bright yellow like this. It's more of a golden yellow, isn't it, really? But more biased towards yellow than sort of brown colour. So grabbing some of the burnt sienna, we can pop that in there. That'd be enough, actually. Rinse it out quickly. <laughs> Don't overdo it. And something like that might do. Let's have a quick test a minute and see what that's like. See how golden yellow that is? It's a lovely colour. A bit more yellow in there, I think. I keep testing on some scrap watercolour paper until you get the right colour that you want. Then what you need to do is offer that up to your reference photograph. So in my case, on my tablet here, this is the one in question a lot. You can just see it, I know. So I'm looking at that sort of colour there. And it's not far away, that is it. That's quite close, actually. So that should do the trick. So use that one for the eye now. And that with the base layer on there. Grab a size 6 brush. This one's got a very long tip, actually, this particular one. This is a Rosemary Inco XP Series 366. As I said, size 6. So I'm going to use that one, just initially anyway. So let's grab some yellow. Normally, very often anyway, I'll wet the paper first of all, but in this case, I really want this colour to stand out as a background wash or foundation colour. Just by very carefully going around that pupil in the middle. Because it is in the middle, you know. Yeah. Sometimes they're not. <laughs> very carefully. Now with watercolours we know, you start off with the lightest colours first of all, then gradually get darker as you go along. It's a nice golden colour that I do like, that's like a golden yellow. I can see flecks of this as well within this dark area on the side. Now, we can see hints of blue in there, but I'll show you a little trick on that later on, how to get the blue within the eye. For that nice kind of blue highlight, you know. Few little areas here and there as well. And that's it. And then I finished. Yeah, right. So I want that to dry. Once it's dry, we can start adding the detail in there. But so what I want to do. Watch out for any water runs on your metal ferrule there. Let's see that. Whoa. That runs down my bristles and drips onto that watercolour paper. And up with a big puddle on there instead. I can see a little bit of yellow around here. It kind of tapers out to very fine points around here. Yeah, not much on the other side, is there? I might just put a hint of it, probably around there, but not much. Just a hint. Clean damp brush. Make sure you take most of that water off your brush. If you have some kitchen roll like this lot, just drag it through the kitchen roll just once like that. Should be enough. And then very lightly, using tiny circles, just soften that yellow back. And soften that one as well. Now I need this to dry. And once it's dry, then we'll start painting some details over the top. I'm looking forward to that. Right, size double zero brush. I baked an old one. This is a Winsor Newton Cotsman series 111. Size zero, zero, of course. What I want to do is add some detail within the iris now. Now, I can see on that reference photograph when you're really pinching close, it's full of tiny, tiny stipple marks, isn't it? Tiny, tiny dots. So what we do need to do is mix up some dark colour for that. Now, initially, the colour isn't really dark, is it? So what I might do is get some more of our burnt sienna, which is, as you know, this one here. Okay, a little bit more of that. Just pop that into my mixing bowl with the yellow and enrich that down a little bit more. So load it, roll it, pull away, give it a tap or two on some kitchen roll, and then go into your painting. Here we go. 
This is where we start to add in some very tiny little marks, just by stippling all the time. See this? Tiny stipples, not too many. This is the lightest colour that I can see within the eye. Just a few, barely discernible, aren't they? All the way around. And that is it. That's all we need. All right, so that's the lightest colour in there. Now we need a darker colour. Now for the darker colour, let's get my mixing brush this time. We'll need a little bit of Payne's Grey. So Payne's Grey. Pop that down there. Now you want this to be initially more of a watery consistency, I think. Then some more burnt sienna. Payne's Grey is a nice colour, but it's blue, isn't it? It's like a bluey black. So I'm going to tone that down. I'm going to warm it up a little bit. It's got more of a, like a browny black there. Let's see that. That's what that is. We can always darken it if we need to. So a little bit more water in there. Then thin that down. And we'll need to thicken that slightly more in a bit. So grab some of that. Really watery indeed. And tap some off again. Make sure there's not too much on that brush. And start to stipple again around the eye. Very, very fine. If there's too much on the brush, get some kitchen roll again, give a couple of taps and carry on. Then work your way around the eye doing the same thing. Just note, by the way, that when you look at the eye, the more concentrated around probably a few half this part here, more the left hand side, isn't it? With a slight gap away from the pupil in the middle here, obviously, to where the gap is here. So you've got a bit of a gap there. And you see what I mean when you look closely at that photograph again. Then work your way around the eye doing the same thing. Next layer, a little bit more of the Payne's Grey. Pull that into one corner for now. And then mix that into there. Again, nice and watery. So it's really dark in there now. It's a very dark, deep brown, isn't it? Take most of that off the brush and do the same again, but a few little dots this time around. So a few stipple marks. So I'm going to go right from the inner edge of the pupil at the moment, just by tiny, tiny dots. Because they are virtually black, aren't they, in there? I might get a little bit more Payne's Grey saying that. A touch more in there. Every time you have paint in there to use paint, you're going to thicken that paint down, aren't you? Yeah, I think that's slightly better, then. that'll do. And add these in as well, using the same idea. Notice a bit of a ring coming around there, isn't there? A bit more there. Tiny, tiny ring, which is going to be... Let's see where that goes. It's around there. That's better, lots of better colours and like that. Don't just paint a ring around it. Use small stipple marks to add that in. A 
think the key with doing something like this really is that you don't want to completely cover all of that lovely yellow behind there. Remember that's our basic background layer, our foundation wash. It's there so we can build on top of it. So we can add these finer details right over the very top. So we've got that bit of a ring there, we can just add a few extra ones. Just cut away from that so it all sort of blends together in a way. Just remember not to go too dark. If you need any dark ones in, you can add those in later. Once we've got the dark lines in there, first of all, and we'll see how they contrast with one another. Because the thing is, as you know, we've got the lighter tones, which obviously are down the side here in the background wash. We've got the mid tones, which are on now for our detail. Then we'll have the deepest, darkest tones as well to work with. Of which we'll be doing very shortly. stipples down here as well just add a bit of color in there and then towards the edge of the eye But this area here needs to go back a little bit, to be honest with you. So I'm going to like this, soften that back. It's a little bit too far over. I'm trying to get a balance around that iris, really, because we know the iris comes down to about here. So you've got this sort of gap on this side. You want something equal to that on the other side. So where the pupil stands on the edge here, a bit of an oval, as you can see, to make sure that gap is the same as that one, because the pupil is in the dead centre, isn't it, of the eye. In this case, not always though. Depends on which way the animal or the bird in this case is actually looking, doesn't it? The darker side starts, you know where we've got the bit of a crossover area here? That's where the darker side starts. And curves its way around like that. Just trying to get a good balance between the two. Yeah, that should do. Then with a very damp, clean brush like that, very lightly. Just give these areas a tickle now, just softens them just a fraction. Then give that a dry. And there we go. That's our mid-tones on there now, and the mid-tone details as well. So the next thing we need to do is start with the darkest layer. What, already? I know, darkest layer. <laughs> now painting something like this is really good fun, isn't it? Especially when it's a wildlife subject. Now, I've got well over 150 other watercolour wildlife subjects on my Patreon channel. I go through every single video, right from the start all the way through to the end for you, show you how to do them as well. So if you fancy being sport for choice when looking for a wildlife subject to paint, have a look at the link in the description down below for my Patreon channel. Hopefully, I'll see you there. Right, it's nice and dry. 
We need to make up a dark colour, I mean a really dark colour now. I'm going to mix up two different colours. I'm going to go for indigo and burnt umber. Mm, there, something different for you, hopefully. Who knows, it might not be. So indigo, which is this one here. Okay, indigo. And you want this more to a creamy consistency. Now then, burnt umber. Dry as a bone in there. So a little bit of water. Let's get some water in there. It's one little droplet. There you go. And a little droplet. And we'll pop that into the indigo. Not enough there. So we need to do wipe everything off with the brush as much as you can. Wash that brush out again. I can start off with a nice clean brush then. And add a bit more in there. Now this is getting darker and duller. We're still more on the blue side. I want it more in between the two. And that is nearly there. Look at that. That's a lovely dark colour. Let's get some test paper for a minute. Try that. Look how dark that is. I'm still more on the blue side, but I think, you know, I quite like that really. It's not a bad looking colour, is it? Now the first thing I want to do is some extra stipples, but not many. You don't want to completely kill that yellow in there, do you? Very lightly indeed. Hardly touching the paper. Two hairs and air. That's all it is. Just about anyway. <laughs> That'll do. And then I'm going to start going around the eye. Look at that overall shape as well of the eye. So first of all around the pupil itself. Very carefully look at that curve as it works its way down the eye. Kind of sweeps underneath a slight bit here, kind of comes down a little bit of a dip. Then works its way back round again. Keep the line nice and fine though. And then we've got a line coming there. One on the inside. And this little area between this section here is a small area in there. You can't really see it. So because of that, there's no point trying to paint it either, is there? Not really. And then that works its way back down again, down the side here. It just walks around, around the back of that area there. Now here, the line is minuscule, just very lightly, barely touching the paper. Keep as fine as you can around that area there. You don't want it too thick or too dark. And that sort of hooks around to where the feathers go around there. So that's basically plotting it out is what we've just done there. And now we can start to think about filling that in. So let's fill in the pupil first of all. Now, filling the pupil, I'm going to go a little bit shy of that edge to begin with. And I do that because it just helps me just to kind of fine tune the shape of this without making it too big too soon. Fill this in. Don't worry about any of those highlights. I'll show you what to do with that in a bit. Completely fill it in. Then you can slightly widen it bit by bit. And you can see where these edges go. I can see my pencil marks still actually within there, so I can just paint those over. Nice and fine. Remember not to overload that brush when you're doing this. Once it's fine, smooth and egg-shaped. A bit more there. Tricky part is when you place the tip of your brush onto the paper, because you're painting in a dark area, you can't see where you've placed that tip. <laughs> so where did I put it? Where did I put it? And end up painting the line too wide or too thick or something like that sometimes. But that's just about there, look. There we go, it's not too bad. So it's just a bit a little bit neater around the right hand side there. I think we've got more or less an egg shape going on there, haven't we? Of course we have. Yeah. Then all you need to do thereafter is start to darken areas that need to be darkened. Now this area here, you can see actually to be honest with you. 
It's a mixture of black and our brown colour, so these two colours together. So what I might do, just very quickly, or very briefly, I don't want to try and do it too quick. Never rush your painting, you know that. Go back into your brown colour, that paints grey and burnt sienna. And then start to paint this in, this dark area, then you can overlap that in places though, not everywhere, with our kind of dark black here. Which is a lovely one, isn't it, the indigo and burnt umber. There's so many variations on mixing blacks, there really is. Pull it up, leaving gaps in between. Remember what I said about this gap? So we've got that gap there, that should be equal to this one, and vice versa. So let's bring that one slightly further in now. Leaving little dots and gaps in between here, look. Then switch back to your dark colour, don't bother washing the brush out, there's no need. They can start to add some of this in there as well, but not everywhere. You can leave gaps in there. So we've got a few little gaps going on as you can see here. Let's darken the pupil up again. Okay. I'm going to take most of the paint off the brush now. I'm just going to add some basic little details in there now, just below the eye. This is where the line goes underneath there, doesn't it? Kind of curves under like that. And this area here, which is near on, not quite, but near on void of feathers, is only just about, you know, kind of discernible. You can just make out this edge here. It blends into the feathers there. We'll paint it in anyway, okay? Go on, just paint it in. <laughs> A bit of brown around there. And I think that's all the main layers for the eye done. So now we've got to think about the highlights, haven't we, within the eye. How do we do the highlights? Well, let me show you what we're going to do with that, so stay tuned. Now, watercolour white. Make sure that whatever white you use is opaque. So not semi-opaque, not semi-transparent, but opaque. Now, there's a lot of different whites on the market. So have a look around, see which ones you can find. Now, if you've got white gouache, use that instead, that's fine. So nice and creamy, remember, nice and creamy. The weaker the white is, the more it will fade and go more grey, really, when it dries. Something like that, maybe. There we go, that'll do. Couple of taps. Now let's have a look at this highlight we can see in here. Well, more than one highlight, isn't there? You've got a line going over in dots. So it's in this direction. So let's add that one in first. Starts roughly around the middle area here. So we've got a dot there. And sort of works its way over towards 10 o'clock direction, doesn't it? So dot, 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 dot. And if it's not right, you can always go over this with some black. Our dark colour, you know, we already made. If it's a little bit too thick, at the moment, that's too bold, isn't it? So I'm going to have to go around that. And then we've got some highlights around here. Just hints of highlights just there. Okay, nice and creamy, remember? Then this sort of works its way across and around the dark area there. Now, towards the middle of the eye, I need a finer tip on this brush, really. It's getting a bit old, this brush. You can see a bit of a highlight just here. Again, I'll fine-tune this with a dark colour around it once this is dried. Then that sort of wings its way towards the left as well. More towards probably between 8 and 9 o'clock direction. There's a highlight just below that. <laughs> and below this, there's two small marks. They're probably a little bit lower now, they are. Two tiny, tiny marks. And the good thing about this white paint in here is that once it's dry, you can just reactivate it again. Okay. Quick dry with a hairdryer. I'll just touch that around then go around the edges of that. But I might get myself a new brush. Okay, that's nice and dry now. And this is a new brush now, so it's got a very fine tip on it. They do wear away after a while, my little detail brushes. But they're not very expensive, so I don't mind. They can fine tune these little highlight areas, these little dots that go across the eye. 
To be honest with you, when you zoom your photograph back out, when you shrink it back down again, it's nearly, not quite, but nearly one solid line in there. But in this case, you know, I might put more dots around it. We'll see anyway, see how it goes. Now this area here should be slimmer there as well. I know the feeling. And then that comes down to the left here as well. Just to tidy this area up. Quite straightforward that's isn't it? Working around here. Little tiny highlights. And this is where you need your best glasses on as well. Right, clean brush. Back to your white paint again. Just the tip of the brush and the white paint. Watch out for them runs again on that metal ferrule. They can look around this area here. We've got that blue highlight. I said I'd show you this, didn't I? Creating a blue hint on there. If you, if you know me, you know what I'm going to do as well, don't you? Of course you do. That goes probably about three quarters away across. Somewhere like that. And also in the dark area on the other side as well. Just a hint of it there. This is really thick and because it's so thick it's not spreading very easily. But I want it to be quite bright. I'll put a little bit more around there actually. So about adjusting and fine tuning as you go along. Okay, as I say, best glasses. Barely touching the paper here. And my nose is also quite close to the paper so I can see what I'm doing. Without getting my bald head in the camera shot. A few other ones dotted around as well. See a bit of a line just there. Get barely noticeable. Colour wise, what I'm going to do is get a little bit of phthalo blue. It's a lovely colour. Using this brush, I don't need to mix it or anything like that, so I can go with my size or zero brush here. With a bit of phthalo, look how bright that is. I'll watch this. Oh, look at that for colour. Very nice. So phthalo blue, and make sure it's more of a, more of a milky consistency. Yeah, I'm going to say watery. But more milky, I want it to stand out a bit more. Then drop that over the top of these white areas here. Now, don't go over that area more than probably once or twice because it'll start to move. This area on this side is a little bit watery, right? it's a little bit thinner, so let's just water that down a touch. I'll add a little bit of this on there now. Preferably one fell swoop. Now the waterier it is, is that a word waterier? Then the more it's going to blur that white. Like that was faded, and that'll do for now. You can always add more over the top once it's dry, if need be. And I think that concludes painting the eye for now. So that gives you some ideas how to go about painting an eye, or this lovely bird. Now you can fine tune it, you can go for some dark colour if you wanted to. The tip of the brush, start putting a few extra stipples here and there. Remember not to completely kill that yellow underneath when you do that. Slightly more stippled, or darker, should I say, around this area here, because obviously you've got the, um, the eyebrow <laughs> kind of coming across the eye there, kind of casting a shadow in that one area. So you can put a few more, but not too many, around that area there. Well, that's the eye painted. So now what we need to do is paint that very strong and detailed looking beak. And that will be in part three. Now you'll find the link to the video here on the screen, but also in the description below this video as well. Have a look down there because there's lots of links and information all to do with watercolour. And also a link specially for the materials which I use for my watercolour paintings. Right, I'll see you again in part three.